Ranger. Are you silver? A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver. The Lone Ranger. on and let's go. Go where? No use making any trouble, Meredith. Come on, get dressed. What do you want with me? I haven't done anything. Maybe you don't consider murder anything, but the rest of us do. What are you talking about? Come on, get your clothes on. But I've got a right to know why I... Look, I found Judge Scoville's body not an hour ago. Judge Scoville? Yes, on the road from Indian Hill. What's that got to do with me? Why would I murder the judge? We don't know. Yet. Well, you're both out of your heads if you think I killed Judge Scoville. Meredith, I'll give you three minutes to get dressed. All right, come on inside. Got it. What's the next tie party? I don't know. Why? Just wondering. Must be something real bad. Yeah? Yeah, because I heard my pop talking to my uncle about having one tonight. When I asked him what it meant, he said, now you go on outside and play. That's a sure sign it means something real bad. You're right, son. A necktie party does mean something real bad. Who are you? Are you a bandit? No, son, I'm no bandit. The only bandits go around with a mask on. Sometimes other people wear them too, son, for their own reasons. Tell me, how did your father happen to be talking about this necktie party? My uncle came over and told him they just put Mr. Meredith in jail because he murdered Judge Scoville. Judge Scoville? You knew him, Kimosabe? I think so, Tonto. Wasn't the judge a tall man with a long beard? And he always wore a white handkerchief around his neck. Yes, I remember now. Do you know what a necktie party is? Yes, I do, son. You see, when a man's accused of something wrong, he's brought to court. A judge and jury listen to everything that happened. They think things over very carefully and decide whether he's guilty or not. Then, if he is guilty, they punish him. That's trial by law. But that's not bad. No, son, that's good. But sometimes people get very angry, and instead of waiting and giving him a fair trial, they take him out of jail and hang him. That's what's bad. That's what's called a necktie party or a lynching. Gee, I don't think my pop ought to do that. I don't think he should either, son. I don't think he will. We'll put the gate back for you. All right. Bye, boys. Bye. Bye. Won't be any trick at all for a gang of men to break Meredith out of here. That's right. No trick at all. You fellas usually wait till dark to start your necktie parties? Look, Meredith, I'm here to prevent that sort of thing. Yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet the next thing you're going to tell me is that you know I'm innocent, and you're going to get me out of here. I don't know whether you're innocent or not, and I'm not going to get you out of here. But I'm going to see that no one else gets you out of here until you've had a fair trial. Why? Why are you so interested in me? I'm not. I'm just interested in seeing that you get a fair trial. But why? Because I don't happen to like lynchings. Well, if what you say is true, why do you hide behind that mask? Don't you let me see who you are. Does it matter who I am? No. No, I suppose not. Well, whoever you are, I am innocent. I swear I am. I didn't murder Judge Scoville. Sure, I know they found my gun beside him, but I don't know how it got there. It was in my holster when I went to bed last night. Guns not ride horseback. Well, it's no use. Go on, Meredith. But it's not much use. My gun was there. 
And as your Indian friend said, guns don't ride horseback. Besides, I've got a jail record. What for? I got mixed up in cattle rustling when I was 16. I thought it was smart. That's why the judge wasn't too keen on my marrying Alicia. Who is she? His daughter. I'm in love with her. Look, that should prove I didn't kill Judge Scoville, shouldn't it? Why would I kill my girl's father? I was doing everything I could to show him that he could trust me. I was doing everything I could to win Alicia, so why? Why would I kill her father? You sabe, me think guard, wake up. I thought I heard someone talking. Sure sounded like someone talking. Where me find Sheriff? Please, me want to see him right away. He's out at Jess Latham's for having lunch. It's about a mile down the road. Be back in an hour or so. Thank you. Say, were you around here a few minutes ago talking to anybody? Me? Me alone? Who me talk to? I'd have sworn I heard somebody. You won't need that. I've come for a little talk. All right, Letty. What do you want to talk about? Young Meredith. There are plans to lynch him. I don't know anything about that. But I can assure you I heard lynch talk. What are you going to do about it? That's my business, isn't it? Mine, too. Oh, so that's who you are. A pal of Meredith's. Where did you two meet up? When he was in jail, maybe? I'm no pal of Meredith's. I've come to see that he gets a fair trial. And he won't have any trial if he's kept in that jail overnight. Well, what do you want us to do? Let him out of jail? Decorate him for bravery for killing one of the finest men in this part of the country? What I'd like you to do is this, Sheriff. Arrange to have Meredith taken to Booneville for trial. Oh, that's great. That's one of the best I've ever heard. What's the matter, Jack? Who's this? It's a pal of John Meredith's. He's got a great scheme to help Meredith get away. That's the last thing I'd want. But I'd rather see him get away than fall into the hands of that angry mob. <laughs> of course. But don't you see what that means? Even if he's guilty, what a black eye would give the community. It's things like this, mob violence, that keep people from settling here. What makes you so certain they're going to try to lynch him? Go into town, Sheriff. Hear what they're saying. Meredith doesn't have a chance. He doesn't deserve a chance. <laughs> Ted here being in love with Alicia. It's only natural, I suppose, that he should feel that way about the man who killed her father. But, son, everybody deserves a chance. Yeah. One thing I do know, though, for sure. If the mob really wants to get a hold of Meredith, it'd be a lot easier for them on the road to Boonville than it would be in that jail, even with you along. I think you're right. I'm afraid we'll just have to leave him where he is and do the best we can. Tano? Kimisabe, it's a plenty big job for me and you to fight whole town for John Meredith. There's one person that can help us, Tonto. That is if she will. Come on. Well, thanks for the lunch, Jess. I gotta get back to town and see what's going on. You ought to get rid of that, Sheriff. It's no good for you or your horse. Keeps my pants up, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye. So long. Dad, who is that man in the mask? I don't know. But you've got nothing to worry about, son. I told you I'd take care of everything, didn't I? Yeah, but why does he have to butt in? Uh, he didn't find out anything. Look, son, you're my boy and nothing's gonna happen to you, nothing. You sure, Dad? Of course I'm sure. How can it? Everybody's convinced that Meredith killed the judge, even the sheriff. And Meredith's the one they're gonna get for it. So why don't you just relax? Trust your old dad, will you? Mr. Burbridge. Hello, Letty. Mr. Latham in? Yes, he's taking his exercises. Come in. Hello, Latham. Oh, hello, boys. Lawson and the others will be along any minute now. What about Holly Norse? He's going to meet us in front of the jail. That stuff really do you any good, Jess? Well, I bet I can lick both of you. <laughs> Howdy, Latham. Oh, hello, Lawson. Well, I guess it's about time we started. Ted, are you ready? Be right there, Dad. We'll pick up Fred and Jack and four or five of the others at Tom Seidel's house. Hello, Mr. Latham. Why, Alicia. These men are with me. 
Alicia. Hello, Ted. You going somewhere? Why, why, yes. Where? Well, I, I... It wouldn't by any chance be down to the jail, would it? To the jail? Look, Alicia, you've had a bad day. Now, I don't know why these men brought you here, but... Yes, I've had a very bad day, Mr. Latham. But I've come here so there won't be worse days ahead for me. I don't think I understand what you mean. This is what I mean. I ask you not to do this. I've never believed this of you, Alicia. Believed what? That you could be so in love with a man that you'd come here and ask for his life when he murdered your father. Whether or not I'm in love with John has nothing to do with it. My father would have asked a fair trial for him. That's all I ask. Have him taken to Boonville so that his pal here can help him make a getaway on the road? He doesn't want to take him to Boonville. Oh. What then? Your eloquence swayed me this afternoon, Mr. Latham. All I ask is a chance to go to Boonville and get a judge. You see, they didn't know Judge Scoville there, and they don't know Meredith. At least this way, the boy will have a decent chance. All right, go ahead. Go to Boonville. Get a judge. Yes, and by the time I get back, Meredith will be dead. Oh, I don't know. I do. Look here. Any arrangements we make in this town are none of your business. Judge Scoville was our friend, not yours. The judge was my father, Mr. Latham. I think that entitles me to some say. What do you want us to do, Alicia? I want you to let John Meredith stand trial. I want you to help this man to get him that trial. But, Alicia, nobody knows this man. We don't know what he's going to do, what he's up to. He may be just using this as a stall. And... How long will it take you to get to Boonville and back? We'll be back by tomorrow morning. Then how much of a chance are you taking? If he's not back by morning, if, as you say, he's just stalling, you can go on with your plans. That don't sound unreasonable, does it? All right, Alicia, if that's the way you want it. Thank you. We'll be leaving for Boonville right away. Good. I'd better go over to Tom Sedell's and let him know our plans have been changed. Right. You go down to the jail and tell Norris and the rest. Thank you, gentlemen. Colonel, you go along to Boonville and get the judge. You stay here? Young Latham will clean with fear while we are talking in there. I'm going to keep my eye on him. You think him mixed up in murder? I'm not sure. Just a feeling. Good luck, Tom, and hurry back. We have only till morning. Me meet you at Sheriff's office. All right. Tato, in case you have any trouble getting the judge to come back with you, give him this. I think this will do it. Let's do it, keep us heavy. Be careful. It'll all come out now. If there's a trial, it'll all come out. You told me nothing was going to happen to me. You said they'd lynch Meredith right away when they found his gun there. You said it'd be easy with his jail record. You said you'd fix it so no one would find out I did it. You said... <laughs> Why couldn't I have had a man for a son? <sighs> Look, Ted. Listen. There isn't going to be any trial. The judge is never going to get here from Boonville. I'm going to see to that. But how can you? Never mind. I said I'd see to it, didn't I? Look, you better get out of town for a week or so, till this all blows over. Go on up to Centralia. I'll tell everybody I sent you up there to look after some cattle for me. I'd leave tonight, right away, if I were you. You're upset. Unless you talk to people and see them, the better it'll be. Well, bye, Dad. Take care of yourself, son. By this time tomorrow night, Meredith will be dead. The people will have hanged him. So you've got nothing to worry about. Remember. I'll remember. Who's there? There's nothing to be afraid of, Ted. That is, if your conscience is clear. You again? 
Meredith's pal. I wouldn't do that. Better let me keep this. What? What are you going to do with it? I may have good use for it later on. You mean you're, you're going to kill me with it? Why, Ted? Do you deserve to be killed? Look here, mister. You've got no right to ask me a question like that. No right at all. I think I have. You see, I overheard your father talking a little while ago. He told you there was nothing to worry about because by tomorrow night, Meredith would be lynched. Oh, wait a minute. You got this thing all wrong. Have I? John Meredith doesn't think so. How could he tell you anything? He doesn't even know about... About what, Ted? About who really killed the judge? Put yourself in Meredith's place. How does it really feel to be at the hands of someone who could kill you? Wait. Wait a minute. Don't shoot me. I'll go back and tell him the truth. I'll tell him Meredith really didn't kill the judge. No? Who did? I did. Why, Ted? He said I wasn't good enough to marry Alicia. How did Meredith's gun get by the judge's body? My father stole it and put it there to protect me. You're, you're not going to shoot me? No, Ted. I took this gun for other reasons. You see, it was your guilty conscience that made you think I might use it on you. Well, what happens now? We're going back to town and you're going to take your medicine. I'll help you break up camp. Come on. we're going, Ted. I wouldn't be so sure. Hello, Sheriff. Well, I'm certainly glad to see you, Sheriff. This man jumped me in the woods last night and made me say that I killed Judge Scoville. Why, how can anyone make you say a thing like that? Well, wouldn't you with a gun in your ribs? I'd have confessed the murder of Abraham Lincoln to get away from this madman. He told me his father put Meredith's gun beside Scoville. <laughs> now, you know how ridiculous this story is. You know my father. You know he'd never do a thing like that. Well, suppose we all go have a talk with your father. Yes, suppose we do. My father inside, Letty? No, he ain't. Got any idea where he could be, Letty? It's important. No, I haven't. I'll take Ted back to town and hold him. Hold me? Hold me for what? I'm not making any charges, Ted. I just want to hold you till your father gets back. But I've told you, this man pulled a gun on me and made me say I killed the judge. I've told you it's ridiculous. You can tell him that at the trial. What trial? The trial is taking place this afternoon. Mr. Latham comes back. Would you tell him to go right over to the sheriff's office? Yes, I will. Oh, Mr. Latham! Letty, what's wrong here? It's Teddy. They've taken him off to jail. What? Your son confessed to me last night that he murdered Judge Scoville. Oh, no. I did all I could to protect him. But Teddy didn't kill the judge. He said he didn't. He told the sheriff right in front of me that this man pulled a gun and made him say he did it. But he didn't do it. I'd take his word any day against this. Damn it. Stop your bawling, Letty. But Teddy in jail. I know. I can't believe it myself. Now that it's your boy that's in trouble, I imagine you're glad Tano's bringing back the judge. But he isn't. He isn't? He never got to Boonville. I headed him off. You see, this is my country, not your Indian friends. And I knew all the shortcuts. But I, I wanted to save my boy. I, I thought I could do it, too, if I could stop your friend from bringing the judge. But now that Teddy's confessed to you, why, there's nothing more I can do. So I guess you might as well go and let your friend loose. He's tied up in a cabin not too far from here. Where exactly? Well, it's right up. Oh, I better go with you. Doubt if you could locate it. Mr. Latham. Yeah? Would you mind leaving your gun here? <laughs> oh, why, sure. Here you are, Letty. You're not going to take your gun? No. Oh, I won't need it. Shall we go? Mr. 
Gavalti. These knots are pretty tight. Have you got a knife? Yes. Think you could ride to Bullenville? Ah, uh, me ride. That man who hit me on the head and stopped me? Yes. Now he stopped. All right, Meredith. You can come out now. You're free, John. Release you. You're going to let him go without a trial? Isn't there going to be a trial? Sure, there's going to be a trial. But it ain't going to be Meredith's trial. We just checked on the bullets that killed the judge. Meredith's gun is a 38. The judge was killed with a 45. I noticed your gun was a 45, Ted. They never would have bothered to check those bullets if it hadn't been for that mass man. Oh, look, they're leaving. Bye, mister. Bye, sonny. I never knew anyone set bandits went around in a mask. Neither did I, son, until I met him. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. Hello, Silver Hoy! 